All right, so let's say you've started to drink a little bit of the Kool-Aid that I've been pouring in these last few videos. I'm gonna be more club focused, but what happens if I'm hitting it all over the map? How do I control that? That's what we're gonna get into. Hey everybody, welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. Hopefully you're enjoying these videos. I think 2024, like I said, it's gonna be a really good year. I'm excited about a lot of things and I'm changing the format of the channel a little bit. I still get questions all the time from people asking what happened to this swing or that swing or this review, which is why it's important for you to subscribe and then click the little bell and select all notifications so you don't miss any videos. And also yeah, I work with some companies. One of those is Hack Motion. This is a wrist sensor. It goes on your wrist and it also goes on the back of your hand or it can attach to your glove. When you use this device, you can use the free app along with the device on your iPhone or Android device to help you see in reality what maybe you're perceiving incorrectly in your brain at address at the top of your backswing and at impact. Impact being a huge factor. That impact position and where your wrists are, that's so super crucial. in this device, this can help you and give you a dose of reality. All right, without further ado, let's get into this video. Okay guys, if you've been watching the last several videos that I've been putting out, you'll know that this year, 2024, I'm really trying to strike out on my own. I've spent so much time, spent years, studying, reading, watching, listening, and trying a ton of different golf philosophies, methods, uh, sort of swing models, systems, you, you name it, I've tried a ton of it. And it's been going on longer than I've been doing this channel. I've been on this channel for five years now, but before that I was studying it. And I've studied everything from the conventional to the unconventional, and I've tried so many different things. Even things that I haven't tried on camera that I haven't made a video series about, I've read them. I've watched it. I've, I've studied it. You guys bring up a lot of stuff and I'm like, yep, I've heard of it. I have absolutely put myself to the ringer and I said, you know what? I think I've learned enough. And of course, all of this has influenced me in some way or another. It may be positive. It may be negative. It may be small. It might have been a huge influence. It's all affected how I've come to the conclusion that I have, which is number one, I think we should be focused on what the club is doing. I think we all have slightly different bodies that do different things with different time and different proportions and everybody's feels are completely different. You can't tell somebody how to feel something. They have to figure it out for themselves. So if you think about the club, that's the universal. That's the universal part. This doesn't change. And number two, I feel like many, not, I can't say all, but many of the problems that plague most average amateur golfers, most golfers in general, is that they don't start out with a knowledge of how this tool actually works. They think you hit up on the ball when you first put a club in their hand. They think that they need to keep the club straight up and down and bring it like a Ferris wheel. There's so many misconceptions because they really don't know that you need a slightly descending blow for a ball on the turf, that you need your grip to be leading the club head in. Well, one of the things that you may or may not understand or you might struggle with is playing army golf. Goes to the right, goes to the left, goes to the right, goes to the left. You might hit it all over the map. Like, man, if I can get decent contact on the ball but I can't control it, then what does it matter? So I wanna try and go a little bit into how you can keep your ball in play and have fairly straight-ish shots. Straight-ish. I usually play a little bit of a baby draw but I hit a fairly straight ball most of the time. That ball started off to the right a little bit. Now, sometimes in a simulator, maybe you've just got the device back here lined up a little bit incorrectly. Maybe it's just a little skewed off to the side. That could be, or it could be the ball flight dynamics. What I suggest to you is to go onto the Google machine, go in there and type in ball flight dynamics, and then at the top, Instead of hitting all results, hit images. In there, you will find some really great drawings that make things really simplified. It's almost like the pain chart at the hospital, where it's a frowny face for you're in a lot of pain and it's a happy face for, hey, I'm in no pain. And it'll tell you what creates a push slice, what creates a pull slice, what creates a straight draw, what creates a push draw. It'll tell you all of that stuff. But for the purposes of this, we're gonna assume that you wanna hit a fairly straight shot. It could curve a little left, it could curve a little right, but generally you want it starting pretty much down the target line 
and you want it to hold fairly straight. You want a baby draw or a baby fade. What that means, if you look at that ball flight dynamics chart, and I've put some of those in previous videos, you feel free to go back and look, but that means you basically have a zero path. Your swing is not going too much out to the left or too much out to the right. It's kind of a zero path, meaning wherever you're aiming, it's going down that line. And then your club face is pretty much zeroed out to that, meaning that it's at 90 degrees. It's perpendicular to that, that line. If you've got a club face that is not square to your swing path, then you are going to have some type of curve to it because the difference between the path and the face creates the curve. Now the club face is going to determine about 85% of where the ball starts. Meaning if I have an open club face at impact, let's see if I can do one of these for you. I'll try and intentionally leave the club face open and see what I get. Club face was open, ball go right. Okay. That determines about it has 85% influence on where the ball is going to start. Now that one started right and actually started turning back to the left. So obviously the club face was not square to the swing path. There was a little bit of difference. Now, if I shut the club face down, all right, a little bit, see if I can get one to go left here, but make my swing match it. Now you get a pretty straight shot, a little bit of turn again that goes off to the left. So if you want your club face and your swing path to be kind of zeroed out to hit a basically straight ball and you don't get that kind of flight, you don't get a pretty straight flight, you know, even if you think you're doing something, you're really not. Even if you think, man, I know I'm swinging toward the target and I know my face is square if your ball flight is not producing that result, something, something is not right. And maybe your perception of reality, your feel versus real meter is going a little berserk on you. Sean Clement actually has a really, a really good thought on the grip. You know, 85% of golfers slice the golf ball, 85%. That's going to go way off to the right for a right-handed golfer and it's usually going to be weak and have a lot of spin and it's going to parachute up in the air and then come right down. Well, he talks about your grip. If you set your grip in here square and then you go in to deliver the club with the grip leading, well, that club face is wide open. So he says to either turn the club face over like this and take your grip so that when you come into impact, you got a much more square club face. Or he says to set the club face square and just take a strong grip. Now, I'm sure some of you have experimented with that very thing. The most common thing that they tell slicers is strengthen your grip. But if you don't couple the strengthening of that grip with the grip actually leading the club head into impact, you're going to end up with some really bad ball flights. I'll see if I can make one here for you. Uh, let's see. All right, here we go. We're going to try and do this. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. That ball's going way left, thin, releasing it. You're letting the club release. You don't have the grip leading you into impact at all. And my grip was pretty much set just like that. Now I'm going to try and do the exact same thing with the club and the grip still the same, but I'm really going to try and make sure that my grip is leading and winning the race to the golf ball. Much straighter ball flight, a little bit of curve, just like mom used to make. This, this is a difficult part of it. It's not, it's not going to be simple. It's going to take a little bit of time for you to get this. Nothing is going to be free. Any of these tips you see on YouTube or in these golf magazines or on Golf Channel or whatever, wherever you're getting your tips and they say, do this to hit monster drives or do this to hit your seven iron straight. If there's any snake oil salesman out there that are telling you this will fix it like that with no effort and no practice and no work for good and it'll be consistent forever and you'll never have to worry about it ever again, uh, just run because that is not true at all. 
start with getting the grip ahead at impact. It doesn't have to be like this, okay? But you need to have the grip outracing the club head a little bit at impact. When you're in that position, try and get your club face square right there when you set it down. Now, if you want to come back to a more neutral setup, or if you want to predispose yourself in a way so that you can bring it right back down to where you were, play around with that and see if that helps. But learn ball flight dynamics. Go look at those diagrams. And then, you don't even have to have a simulator. You can read the ball flight. And from the ball flight that you see, assuming you don't have a bunch of wind that's messing with your ball flight, but read it. If you get one that starts left and goes back to the right pretty hard, there's a diagram on those pictures that will help you determine what your path to face relationship must have been. And you can stop guessing what it should have been. You might think you're swinging out to the right or down the line. If the ball flight doesn't match, then you're not. Something is not happening. Ball flight dynamics and reading those ball flights will tell you everything you need to know to help you get the ball go more down the, the fairway, down toward the green, whatever it is. But you're going to have to play around with it. You can't have good ball striking unless you're using those fundamentals. The grip leading, slightly downward contact, a little bit of speed, all right? Got to have a little bit of speed and a square club path and face to path relationship for a fairly straight ball flight. Just like that. Baby draw right down the line. That's been my stock shot pretty much ever since I started golf. Uh, some of you may have to work on it a little more than others. Some of you are going to have to work on other things a little bit more than others. Guys, I appreciate it. Hope these are helping you. Please give me some comments and your feedback. What do you need to see? Give me a thumbs up. Like I said, I appreciate it. It helps the channel out a lot. Doing your part. I made this whole video. You just got to take one second to click a button. I'll wait. Thank you. I appreciate it. See you in next week's video.